morning, Turning Point, and it's Thursday. What a great day. Today is a day where most of our Connect groups start to gather. So hopefully you're going to be Zooming in or Teams in or whatever it is that you link in to get into these Connect groups. Because see, the Bible tells us that the church is where a group of people gather together that they might actually stand together in faith and believe God's going to do some good things. See, Victoria at the moment, we need some good things to happen. We need to see some change happening. And so it's not going to start because someone's going to change government. It's not going to start because someone comes up with this great idea. It's going to start because God's people rise up. And today, that's what we need to do. First, we need to rise up in prayer. Then we need to rise up in unity. Because on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, it says, three times when they were together with one accord in one place, then the Spirit moved. Can I encourage you? Make sure you're in these connect groups. Zoom in, whatever it is. Just if you can't handle that, just get on a phone call and talk in the background. Whatever it takes, make sure we do it. We're regularly at this moment talking to people in Africa, running connect groups back and forth between Africa and Australia. Why? Because we're one in Christ. And when we stand in together, then we know the word says, there the Lord commands the blessing because of the unity. Today, let's stand in unity as we take the word and we listen to what God's got for us. Bless you as you enjoy the word and the testimony now. Well, welcome to the reading plan. Today is Talking with God and we're reading from Numbers chapter 22. And I'm just going to read a few verses from that chapter. I'm starting from verse 19. You're welcome to spend the night here just as the others did. I will find out if the Lord has something else to say about this. That night God said, Balaam, I'll let you go to Moab with Balak's messengers, but only do what I say. So Balaam got up the next morning and saddled his donkey, then left with the Moabite officials. Balaam was riding his donkey to Moab and two of his servants were with him. But God was angry that Balaam had gone. So one of the Lord's angels stood on the road to stop him. When Balaam's donkey saw the angel standing there with a sword, it walked off the road and into an open field. Balaam had to beat the donkey to get it back on the road. And then the angel stood between two vineyards in a narrow path with a stone wall on each side. When the donkey saw the angel, it walked so close to one of the walls that Balaam's foot scraped against the wall. Balaam beat the donkey again. The angel moved once more and stood in a spot so narrow that there was no room for the donkey to go around. So it just lay down. Balaam lost his temper, then picked up a stick and smacked the donkey. When that happened, the Lord told the donkey to speak and it asked Balaam, what have I done to you that made you beat me three times? You know, God often talks to us in such subtle ways. He doesn't jump up and down and wave his arms in front of us to get our attention. He comes with a small, still voice. That small, still voice can be so easily missed if we are not in tune and if we don't have a listening ear to what he's trying to say to us. God went to great lengths to get Balaam's attention. Is this what he has to do to us? Does God need a megaphone to get our attention and to get our ear to listen to what he has to say? During this time of lockdown, it's a really good time to practice hearing the voice of God. He doesn't always use an audible voice. Sometimes he uses the voice of other people to speak to us. Sometimes he just speaks in our heart and prompts things in our thoughts so that um, we can uh, take heed to what he wants to say to us. Why not read this story in chapter 22 again and let God speak to you through that chapter. Too often we do the talking and we wonder why we don't hear God speaking to us. We need to be still and know that he is God. We need to be still 
and stop doing the talking sometimes and just listen. And so I just encourage you to do that during this time of lockdown to just spend time listening to what God wants to say to you. So God bless you and have a great day. Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia and I would like to share with you uh, God's love and protection over our family. Many of you are aware what had happened to my family last month. My son and youngest daughter diagnosed with coronavirus. I would have never imagined that the virus would come very close to me, even though we as a family were being careful. I thought we are careful. My heart melted to see my two kids suffer, even though at the back of my mind says uh, we were already exposed from the virus. So I thought uh, we just don't need to isolate, but uh, God gave me wisdom and he reminded me to still do the right thing. So I asked my kids to strictly isolate. To beat this virus, I re realized that family team effort is very necessary. It was a great challenge for me as a mother not to be able to touch everyone in my household. And I must admit, I had worries. Worries for the safety of my family. Fear. Yes, I had fears. And many what ifs. What if I contract the virus? Who would look after my kids? The, the disease is no cure and didn't know. And I didn't know how to handle it myself. But later on, I realized that there's no reason for me to worry. God is bigger than this obstacle. I know that there is some microscopic battle going on and even a spiritual battle because that was the same time when we started our Filipino outreach, a church online with a very great purpose. And God reminded me to just stay calm and to stand by his promises. So instead of talking about the virus, my husband and my family stayed focused on what God wants us to do. So with the help of our team who also see the vision, we successfully launched the first ever live streaming of Turning Point Filipino Outreach on the 16th of August. So no obstacle will hinder the plan of God for us. So we stayed positive and did as much as we could. So in Proverbs says, fear will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Right now, I just feel very blessed that my kids are back to normal and the symptoms were not as bad as many others. In our recent test, all of us family tested negative and praise God for that.